Monster Magazine, and we self-publish a magazine with horror stuff from 1974 and back. Uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, Godzilla, all the old school stuff. We just try to bring some of that old school fun back. Our magazine has comics, it has uh, movie reviews, and it has covers by this guy right here, Ricky Blaylock. And I'm Vance Capley, by the way. This is uh, the first issue that we did. And Ricky did this awesome wraparound cover. I was expecting more people. But anyway, um, and then the center spread is a little poster you can pop out and put on your wall. And originally, Ricky and or another friend of ours named Joe Bannerman, he wrote a book called It Follows, but not the same It Follows that you know of nowadays. This was before that. But they were talking about doing a podcast, which became the idea for a magazine. And which he friend, thought was a bad idea. I thought it was a bad idea. Because <laughs> I, I used to have an underground TV show called Spook Show, and I ran 154 episodes. And at one point I was going to do my own uh, horror mag called Spook Show. And the uh, main article was going to be about Mantan Moreland and King of the Zombies. Now, yeah, maybe not. So drop that. But anyway, so our friend Joe had a stroke. It was very sad. He's okay now, but... So that whole idea got put aside. And it stayed in my head. I was like, huh, huh. I just kept thinking. And... But last summer, when Dave came down, my friend Dave Good, he does comics. He's out of New York City. He comes down, our friend David Walker, his cousin David Walker. We all got together one night, and I said, maybe we should do this magazine idea. And Ricky was like, I told you. And it was, it was great. It was great. And so we started doing it. And we sit, like I said, we self-publish them. And the thing is, we do it like print on demand. That way we don't have a big stack of them in my house, and my wife beats me to death. But this, that's how we did it. We're already up to the, our fourth issue right here. And this come out February 1st uh, for uh, Dracula, what we call Dracula release day at over at your cousin's house. But uh, Valentine's Day basically. And it covers the, you know, the various Dracula films. And it has a lot of um, information inside, you know. And we got to interview a lot of cool people. And, uh, one of the cool things we got to do, we got to interview Butch Patrick, we got to interview uh, Rico Browning, um, Jeff Thompson, I'm trying to remember who else. And I, I, we're working on a Kolchak issue, and this thing is going to be like this thick by the time we get done with it. It's just amazing how many people we've got to talk to on this, which I can't say yet until the magazine comes out. So, yeah. Our next issue is going to be Bride of Frankenstein, which comes out the first, well, the 5th of May, actually. So that'll be out soon. It has a great cover by Ricky. And um, make sure you stop by Ricky's table. Look, I'm, y'all have already seen him, but seriously, this guy, he, he just, you do great art. Right well, we've got to cover already for yeah. one, well, one of the covers for the Colchek. Right. The Colchek issue is going to have three different covers. So there's something for everybody. Colin McGord is still in Clark's providing one, Ricky's providing one, and a mystery guest is providing the third one. I've already told you that. I forgot. <laughs> I've had a lot of stuff going on. Um, so we're, we're posting all this stuff online at our website and everything, and fanscapleyart.com is where all this stuff's posted. And there's links, like if you, you get like a signed edition of our magazine, it's a little bit more pricey because we have to print it, bring it to our house, then reship it after we sign it. But there's another one through Indie Planet, and it's a lot cheaper. You can just get it online, they'll ship it right to your door. And there's one at lulu.com. Uh, G, uh, it's on Amazon. It's Prime. on Amazon, yeah. yeah. It's on Amazon. And then uh, a local shop in Columbia I'm called G-Zane Guitars. Guitars. They have it up in there. G-Zane the Guitars and Art. And then a comic shop in Zinni, Ohio. About 68 the vintage the toys, toys and comics. comics. They carry it. So, you know, we're, we're all over the place. Probably, with it. Like I am right now. So, anyway. So the goal of this thing is to kind of bring back that nostalgic old feeling of when you could look at a monster magazine and there was the old standards in there, you, like I said, Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, Godzilla, and kind of, I don't know, it's just something more nostalgic about all that, and it's a lot of fun, and like for little bitty ones, little bitty kids, you can't show them slasher movies, they're too little for that. I know there's people who do, but we, you know, 
We didn't do that when we was kids, though. <laughs> but mom and dad would let us stay up late and watch these on late night TV or whatever. Y'all used to watch them at 4.30. After, yeah, 4.30 after school. After school. Yeah. They had a thing called the Big Show on TV after yeah. school. Yeah, on And they would have, like, Godzilla Week, King Kong Week, <laughs> yeah. Chris from the Black Lagoon Week. And we'd, we'd watch it after school. Yeah, and it was just something fun about that. Where you could sit there, you could sit with your whole family and watch these. It was... The only embarrassing thing was like in the Godzilla movies, the old ones is kind of cheesy and fun, but that's just part of the charm. <laughs> of that. But um, so, you know, we're hoping this thing grows and we hope it becomes a big deal and we're hoping a lot of people really get into it. And if it doesn't, we try. And that's part of the fun of this thing. We get together like once, twice a month and film a podcast and talk about movies we've seen. And there's a, they run Sven Gulli on MeTV. Yeah. Well, we'll sit afterwards and talk about that movie sometimes. It's just, it's just so much fun. So, uh, now that I'm through rambling, does anybody have any questions? Yes. There's a way it works is we have to have multiple. Uh, a new character, but grounded in the same kind of idea that you have here. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, like I said, there's comics in there. Um, and I thought about like maybe creating, because I used to work for Scary Monster Magazine, and there was a character called Destiny Vampire Mermaid. And I got to actually write one of the issues. I actually got to write several, but one of them I got to write early on. I got to create a character of my own, and it was just so cool. And I, I, I kind of want to bring that character back, so I may do that. But I'll, I'll, I'll post more about that later on the website and stuff, because I want to make sure I get everything all lined up right, so there's no trouble with their publishing or anything like that. Maybe you can do like a, a juxtaposition of what you already have here, with ideas that kind of may resonate with, with uh, you know, this kind of generation of youngsters, yes. and maybe you'll probably have a bigger audience. Yes. So, so like, uh, what was the movie? Monster Squad. Uh, yeah. yeah. Monster Squad was a movie that came out in '86, '88, something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And it had the old school monsters, but set in the modern times of the the mid '80s. And it did pretty decent. And we used to rent it a lot and stuff. And I, I still have my videotape at home. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's a thing that can be done. It's just we got to figure out, nod our heads around a little bit, and figure out how to do it. But when we do, it will be something cool, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the first question. You get a poster. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. So uh, all the different monster characters that you uh, worked with or seen in the past, which one is your favorite that you uh, really kind of either relate to or just really enjoy uh, watching or reading about? Um, my favorite monster character? I know what that is already. It's really? Dracula. Yeah, Bella Lugosi Dracula. <laughs> that's uh, that's that. I know. Back when we were growing up, you couldn't say, "Well, I like Godzilla better than Dracula," for the fact that it was a giant monster and it was not. You couldn't include it. So that's how the trick was when his kids. Remember? You remember that? So Dracula, one hundred percent. Bella Lugosi, uh, one of my favorites. I still, if a Bella Lugosi movie's on, I'm watching it. It's yeah. And yours is mine is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, Ricky did, uh, when we did our second issue, it was all Creature from the Black Lagoon stuff. And Ricky did a phenomenal cover for it, and it was just outstanding. It was outstanding. But, uh, any other questions? What are you oh, talking about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want yeah. Questions? Yeah, you were talking bring about Bring it by uh, our table and we'll sign it. Yes, if you we'll we'll give you something, bring it by and we'll sign it. Yeah, you were talking about, you hosted uh, some of like the uh, horror uh, movie shows, like Spin Ghoulie kind of thing. Yeah, we, we, we watched those and stuff. Yeah, and well, I was, I was saying, uh, like I know Spin Ghoulie does all right on MeTV, and he's yes. really kind of the last one. Uh, where would, like, how, with the new medium out there, yes. if you wanted to do, like, because that's where we got introduced to these. I mean, like we had, uh, you know, the old Spin Ghoulie, yeah. and, you know, those what type of medium would you have to go now because like i mean the tv is we got Sven Gulli definitely right. but who i mean i guess also to mystery science theater right. introduced a lot of these things to us so like uh what other medium can we use to get back to those late night? i mean because like there was time it was like that's all you saw at yes. late night yes. and uh, yeah, I, I mean i think a lot of that what well, just depends on the local channels yeah because right. you know back in the 70s there was successful creep right 
And, and before that, Dr. Lucifer. Yeah, before that, Dr. Lucifer. And, yeah. and down, in, like in Florida, you've got Dr. Paul Bear. Yeah, he right. was in our second issue, Dr. Paul Bear was. And then Dr. Gang Green. Yeah, right here but, in town. You know, he's from, well, in Nashville. Well, Hendersonville's where he's Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to put them on TV. Yeah, and, and it's like, is it just that they're not allowed? Because, like, because I mean, for instance, like these guys, some of them would do the news in the daytime. Then at nighttime, they're putting on Dracula makeup, and they're doing that, and because they got you know a large amount of library, but they still got the library there. You know, is there a reasoning why they well, these local real, people don't do that? Anymore? Well, it's real simple. It's money. Yeah, because they could take they could instead of producing a locally made show, right. they could easily just take a repeat of a show, there, you yeah. know, and just throw it in there and just put the ad spots in it. Because the whole yeah. point of free television is the ad spots. Yeah, the best place right now to look for horror hosts right. is YouTube, Vimeo, OSI seventy four. All these places, the horror hosts are there. You just gotta dig and you gotta look. And it's so worth it. Yeah, there's one guy I saw he did, and I, you guys know, probably know him. Tom, the young guy, he's got like black hair, he, and he did a lot of the mystery. He didn't actually have Tom Servo as a guest on there. I've seen him, I, don't, I cannot think of his name because um, that doc, you, have you seen the documentary about the late night horror? Yes, yes, yes. he's in it, and he's still around. I know he does YouTube, but I don't see like regular stuff because like. Like with Spin Gooley, I mean, that's Saturday night at yeah. <laughs> yes. 9 o'clock, you know what time it's yes. going to be on. And, you know, it's like, which is so surprising that, you know, he's the one that's lasted this long, which we yeah. have. But, of course, it goes back to the older Spin Gooley, because he was like Spin Gooley Jr. Yeah, until they, Gooley, yeah. yeah, until he said, okay, you can take the Spin Gooley part now, you know. You've earned it. Yes. <laughs> <Finally. Yes. laughs> But yeah. I still like I like taking if you go to YouTube you get all those bits of the original Finn Gooley oh, yeah. and you can like piece them together and then like take the original movie and like piece it and make your full Finn Gooley oh, episode. Yeah. So. They have uh, the original run of of Son of Finn Gooley yeah. on Fuzzy Memories YouTube channel and it's the final whole movie with commercials and all. And it's just a joy to watch this stuff for me and. And it's just kind of that nostalgic feeling. Yeah. But look everywhere online and you're going to find it. And there's right. even a, I think it's called horrorhost.com. Right. And it has a list of the ones who are still active, active today. today yeah. There's Count Ward Duvall. There's, I mean, they're, they're everywhere. You just got to dig. That's the you got to dig with it. Yeah, because I was wondering. I mean, I got into getting in the horror host after the documentary came out because I was so surprised about the 70s ones. Yeah. Because that's when they kind of got a little bit more sexier. <laughs> you know, it's yes. like, uh, we had one in Cape Girada. I mean, really? And uh, I can't think of her name. In fact, she's pushing, she's putting her own stuff on there. Cool. I mean, she's still going to conventions now. She's about in her 40s or 50s. But, but she hurt because there's a, our brewing plant was Pabst Blue Ribbon was the brewing plant. Right. So the sponsor was Pabst Blue Ribbon. Oh, wow. But, uh, but she was like, and, and there, Alvar had nothing on her because she was at, at the same time that El was right, right. But she was the Paps girl. I mean, she was wow. like, she did the show, and uh, the one show was the uh, one, uh, the, the, the car, the killer car. Remember yes. that? Yes. And she did that one, and then you, then he's like, and the Paps Blue Ribbon. She did that. Like, really <laughs> but yeah, I mean, watching those, just like, wow. And then she now she's still going to the cons now, and she's 40. She's still putting, she's a little older, but she's still, oh, you know, wow. doing great. it. Yeah, that's great. Stuff like that. But I was wondering, because I have thought about it myself, getting into that thing you of getting Because yeah. I mean, uh, you got public domain you can yes. go to and try that. But There are tons of public domain movies. Yeah. Just double check with a video uh, mm -hmm. called, uh, what's the name of that place, Alpha Video. Mm -hmm. They've double checked everything they have in their catalog that's public domain. Mm -hmm. So you should be okay. And if you get uh, a strike against you or whatever, yeah. YouTube is bad about that right now. Right. Don't put it on YouTube. Put it on archive.org. They, they love this creative stuff. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And not, just and you can be the host and do that kind of yeah. thing. Okay. I have, uh, what's it, 154 episodes of Spook Show, and most of them are on archive, and a lot of them are on OSI 74. Two episodes are on YouTube. I had to, uh, they don't like a lot of the stuff I put in the Spook Show. But anyway, I, I'm done with that. That's, 154 <laughs> episodes of Do That. And um, 
it, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, I was trying to the same thing. Next. And I bored him and his cousin to death with Scoop <laughs> Show. You know, the worst one was the, the two hour Thanksgiving special. You know, there's like yeah, a scene. Or what about the episode that you came to my house where I, in my drawing room? Oh, yeah. And we had to endure my daughter and my wife. Nerds. Nerds. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Nerds. They go by the door. Nerds. Yeah, that was getting kind of old, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yes. I got, I got one more. Sure. If they Go don't, ahead. I'm like, you guys have me ready. You have a question? Sure. How long have you been publishing the magazine? Since last summer. We started uh, publishing them last summer. Um, what's the sound cover? What's the date? August 2018. Yeah, last, last summer. Yeah. That was August. Yeah. August. So, yeah, are you out of Columbus? No, we're in Columbia, Tennessee. Oh, Columbia. Yeah. Uh, about what? Forty? About forty-five minutes from here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. If you go, if you go through Dixon and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're okay. trying to get them in stores and everything. It's just taking time because we're a new magazine. We need to get into the Great Escape. Back. Yeah, that, I'm working on it. Thank you. We'll be talking about it with you. Oh, that, that's okay. Here, take another one. Picture of that's happening. <laughs> but uh, uh any, anything else? Questions? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, you were talking about, like we're talking. Um, I know she talked a lot about the Universal, you know, Dracula and Universal. Yes. Now, how you now when Hammer came into the scene? How what's your feelings? With the Hammer coming I, in. I and, love the Hammer cycle of films. Yeah. Like I said, we try to cover everything from right. the end, uh, the beginning of the end of nineteen seventy four. Yeah. December 3rd or 74, all the way back to horror history. So you're going to hit the Hammer films through that. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much got to. Yeah, yeah. And, and because they were they were like, they were the next step up to what yeah. is, becomes the modern horror film because you start getting into the, the blood, the... the yeah. The gore. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's not what I was going to say. But anyway. <laughs> that works. <laughs> but it, it, it was a lot of, they're, you know, they go to that next level. And then you have, you know, through the mid-70s, you start going into the more of the blood and more of the gore and more of the, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and even now with that, if you yeah. look back at that stuff, it's tame compared to today's stuff. Oh, yeah. Right. You have because what, what, here's an example. We, we carried my daughter and his son to see Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th. Right. We had a free show. We were yeah. here for, uh, what, about three years ago? About three years ago, yeah. And, you know, it, it scared us so bad, we ran all the way home. <laughs> they laughed all the way through. Yep, they laughed so hard. They thought it was fun. But that's okay, though. They did sit and watch it, and there was nostalgia for us, at least. You know. Well, she even watches Salem's Lot and goes, oh, this is just Don't even start me on Salem's Lot, bro. <laughs> When I was a kid, when Salem's Lot aired on television, my dad wouldn't let us watch it. I did not get to see Salem's Lot until I was a, an adult man. Uh, what, was about a year ago now? A year ago, okay. And my friend Andy, he's not in the magazine, he's a friend of mine, but he said, so what would you think? I said, I'm mad. He said, why are you mad? I said, I should have seen this when I was a kid. This would have been great as a kid. Scary the pee out yeah, of you. It was like 12, stuff. 13 years old. It, you know, even though it was a TV movie, yeah, if you'd read crazy. the book already, which yeah. I had, yeah. and then you see it on a screen, it just like scared the living daylights out of this. But, you know, some things you want to see when you're a kid, that's one of them. Yeah. You've got to see it when you're a kid. But anyway, so, more crazy Christmas. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to discuss one of our friend Slim Carity. Now, uh, we met this guy from watching his videos, Midnight Monster Party on YouTube. This guy is hilarious, and he wears this vampire goblin mask. He is awesome. He's a great guy, and we started bringing him into our stuff. In fact, we made him get in, start doing work with us. We forced him to with a shovel. He'll get that joke, so you know he'll know what that means. But uh, we, when we do podcasts now, we bring him in on the thing because it's just so much fun. And out of an hour-long podcast, we end up talking to him about four hours one night. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So and he's he's from uh, Alabama, no Florida, Georgia. Georgia originally. Moved to California. Now he's coming back, but he's gonna move to Florida. Anyway, it's a big mess, but we're cool with having him, you know, work with us, and it's a lot of fun. But uh, I, if anybody, 
has an idea or something that they really want to do, and they're just kind of like, you know, I don't know. Talk to your friends about it, because your friends are just as nuts as you are, and they're going to they're going to say yay or nay. This guy right here, and uh, and if it yeah, you know, and I'm, you know what I mean though. Yeah. And you talk with your friends, and if y'all are all the same mindset, all crazy, then you're going to make a monster magazine. You're going to make a cartoon. You're going to make a movie. We or did comic make, book. Yeah, or comic book. We made a movie one time. <laughs> we didn't make that on YouTube yet. That was hilarious. Yeah, it was great. We made a James Bond movie. One day, one day I'll get him to let me put it on YouTube. If that, if that appears on YouTube, I swear to God, don't be a horror movie, all right? In about 30 years about what I did to you. <laughs> uh, but, so like I said, if, if there's a dream you have, try it. Go for it. it it's worth it. You, you wake up when, you know, on those days when you went th- like a really hard time trying to make it happen, but then you go, I'm really trying to make this happen. This is cool. So, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And if you got anything that, you know, bring it by. He'll sign your poster. I'll sign your magazine. And right. If you'll bring yours by, I'll sign it as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Let's give them applause. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Who's your daddy?